Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and this is May 17th, 2020 edition of Market Outlook. Once again, I'm going to do a combined video during these stressful times to give everyone the opportunity to uh, listen to this recording. So first thing, let's take a look at the key indices. Very, very interesting week. Uh, one thing for sure is um, markets sort of ran into a bunch of overhead and then corrected. So first thing to note, right, we've sort of been in this sideways uh, compression with the exception of the Qs, which has been sort of moving up nicely um, over the last uh, month or so. So look, IWM, um, after uh, breaking out of sort of this uh, compression area uh, off the lows, um, basically is trading around the same price. We had a nice run, uh, an interesting correction. Now the thing to note is 50-day moving average on Friday was tested uh, in three out of the four indices. Now we still managed to close under the 10-day moving average in three out of the four as well, but recovered nicely in the queues. Now, looking at our real motion indicators, you can see we're basically um, compressing here. So all of this uh, action and sideways action has resulted in sort of a compression zone, which is building up energy. So whichever way it decides to break out from, it could be fairly significant. Now, uh, a couple things to, to know. Let's take a look um, at the... Uh, 200-day moving average, which could provide uh, some resistance and should be uh, actually formidable resistance. So you can see here in the S&P, uh, even if we get a rally, we're going to be running into this 200-day uh, moving average and important resistance. You've got a similar situation, um, actually even more pronounced. If you get a, a rally here, um, again, in IWM, you're going to be basically running at the top of these channels um, right into uh, that 200-day moving average and into resistance. And that would also correspond to our momentum indicators as well. So there you have it. We're sort of stuck in between sort of sideways compression action um, with some overhead resistance and the bigger trend looming overhead which is clearly negative uh, across the board. Um, and uh, just moving down to the weekly charts, uh, it's also fairly obvious that we've got some major issues to deal with. So IWM, you can see um, at the 200-week moving average, important resistance. Same scenario with the Dow, right? Um, where, where it comes in, uh, the resistance really comes in at the 50-week, uh, which is at 264 to 265 area. But listen, overall, with the exception of the Qs, um, which is really approaching the highs, I mean, clearly, uh, you know, one of the themes is uh, growth stocks, uh, the leading Internet plays that are not impacted and actually getting a benefit from the virus, um, are leading uh, the, uh, the push forward, um, and not so much the case uh, in the other indices. Hence, you've got this wide variance between the two. But we're going to get into it later. You can see with the market being carried by just a few big names, uh, it's very, very questionable how sustainable the bigger rally uh, to the upside could be. And in fact, um, if we do get um, uh, more bad news or a resurgence if things open up with the virus, we can definitely get another test of the lows or even potentially worse. Okay, moving on to uh, volume uh, analysis. One thing you can see here is it's sort of in neutral territory. So this is not surprising, right? We're, we're in betwixt and between, right, the short term trading, which is sort of uh, sideways, maybe neutral to, uh, to positive, depending on the index. But uh, the volume is definitely confirming that. 
So one of the things you can see here, year to date, with the exception of the NASDAQ, which is actually up on the year, right, with those, uh, the NASDAQ 100, up on the year, up 5%. Year to date, the other key indices down 11 to 24%, led by small caps, right? Um, and the, the thing here is in terms of volume, uh, sort of a neutral reading. Uh, you have about as many distribution days as accumulation um, as the markets uh, definitely got hit a bit over the last couple of days, um, hence the down move uh, in the market. Okay, looking at um, uh, what's hot and what's not here, it's, it's very, very clear that uh, flight to uh, certain safety um, definitely took hold um, and inflationary plays really um, got some big attention. Silver leading uh, up over 7.4% for the week. Gold miners up almost 5%. Um, oil actually uh, popped as well, um, and even uh, natural gas. And of course, the other thing that bucked the uh, overall downtrend in the markets is biotech. Um, of course, um, anything um, related to potentially uh, a vaccination, uh, some remedies, cures of people uh, in, you know, impacted or uh, that have the virus, um, definitely uh, boosting the whole biotech sector. So with that, um, it sort of makes sense actually that these um, sectors here um, are getting attention. Um, and in fact, uh, just shortly, uh, we're gonna get into uh, this pretty important breakout uh, in the gold market uh, and the silver. So um, hang on and we'll be there uh, in a moment. Okay, one of the big themes here, um, as the market was moving up, we were not getting uh, an agreement with the market internals. So that's like going to the doctor and you know, you're looking good, but there's something, uh, you know, you got a virus here, it's not looking, uh, things aren't looking very good. So if you take a look, the McClellan oscillator, you can see flip down beneath the neutral zone. And we also started to trade under the 10 day moving average, which was telling us that this um, upward movement here off the lows was running out of steam. So there was a real divergence. Look at this advanced decline line, right? We basically um, really hit important resistance level um, and backed off from there. Now on a shorter term basis, looking at up down volume, we also broke through what I would call the uh, neutral zone, um, you know, early in the week. Um, and the same thing with the advanced decline line. Now we did start hitting what I would call not extremely oversold, but bounced um, slightly off of it with the rally on Friday um, off this 50 day moving average that I mentioned earlier. So overall, you definitely have some weakness um, in the market internals, considering you know this huge move up. And as we hit those highs, it really wasn't compliant, right? So there was definitely a important divergence between the price action and the participation. So we weren't really getting it across the broad market. You can see we hit new highs here, but right off the move or, or sort of matched it, but yet, right, all of this here was showing a important divergence. Hence, we got the sell off, um, but yet we sold off so fast, um, we sort of got a bit oversold short term and bounced. Now, the other thing to note is if we go to our risk gauges, that's also um, telling us that the, uh, as the market was moving up, these risk gauges were not really helping out. So hang on while this, uh, okay, so now taking a look, you can see last week we were 100% bullish, which I was, you know, uh, feeling pretty good about. Um, but, you know, we have to let the market tell us, right? 100% bullish a month ago coming off those lows, also looking pretty good. And now, even as that market was starting to make new highs, we started to back off 
and we're uh, actually only 40% bullish on all of our key intermarket relationships. And hence, we're sort of in a neutral or warning zone. This is sort of what happened right at the highs um, or as the market was making new highs. Massive divergence. We're continually going up and somehow our intermarket relationships, the key ones that measure risk on, risk off, is telling us there's something wrong. And that was a really awesome, powerful signal. Now, are we getting it again? Now, a couple weeks ago, I had all already pointed out that this 296 level here, even up to about 300, which is where the 200-day moving average is, is important resistance. So with us running out of steam on these key risk-on, risk-off indications at these levels are telling us something uh, to certainly uh, make sure you've got your stops in, be cautious, readjust your positions, but um, I'm definitely um, in a different head from where we were last week, and that's how you have to play. Let the markets tell us um, and use our tools and indicators um, and keep an open mind and make sure in this type of environment that your stops and risk parameters are in um, as you set up or before you put the trades on. Okay, moving on to sentiment, the other thing that's interesting is we hit the lower end of the Bollinger Bands, um, and with the trend moving up, which is sort of bearish for stocks, right? You had this huge move off of almost sort of historic lows. This is the ETF. This is the cash index, right? And one thing you can see is we're trading uh, in a, a warning phase, but we hit the bottom of the Bollinger Bands and bounced over the last couple of days, right? We did this both in the uh, underlying index and the ETF as well. So um, one thing you can see here is, um, right, we, we basically took out important support, was sort of a fake out, and then bounced. So this tells us that um, it was looking potentially like uh, we could, you know, be in, in a sort of an all clear mode from a sentiment standpoint um, with any further pressure. But at the moment, right now, bouncing off those lows um, gave us a different picture that the bear case very much is still alive with that bounce. So it'll be interesting to see <clears throat> how that plays out. Again, if we can end up closing on a cash basis, under the uh, cash VIX, under this 23.95 level, which is the 200-day moving average. That's going to tell us uh, that possibly um, things, you know, the, the uh, bearish case and another test of the lows um, could be off the table. At the moment, still very, very much on. Hence, you can see we're getting a very, very mixed picture. The market is very tenuous here. Right, you've got this massive overhead. You've got some breakdown in terms of the market internals. Sentiment bounced um, after tr testing important uh, support levels um, and really respecting its uh, trading band, the lower uh, Bollinger bands. So very, very mixed case here. Okay, looking at various styles of investing, let's take a look at the value versus growth um, picture. Uh, one thing that is really, really clear is that value um, and the Buffett style of investing has been under pressure for well over a decade and has actually really hit new lows on a relative basis. So you can see uh, va uh, value stocks is showing um, uh, real underperformance versus the S&Ps where growth Right, the really um, strong stocks like the Amazon um, showing strong leadership here. Um, now we're still, you know, uh, a bit off the highs, but we've had a really good rally here. So uh, you know, this is th these growth stocks here. They're just a handful, which is also tie ties into 
um, some of the divergences we saw in the market internals. All right, so let's take a look at some sectors here. Um, one thing to focus on um, clearly is biotech, right? So um, there aren't too many sectors that are really showing, well, there actually aren't any sectors that are showing this type of strength. Um, not surprising, biotech, um, especially IBB, where they're searching for cures, remedies, vaccinations, whatever, um, definitely getting the attention. And um, it sort of led on Friday up over two and a half percent. But if you take a look here, we're showing really good uh, leadership and we're not even quite um, overbought. We're running rich, but not uh, hugely overbought. The other thing to note is the other one, uh, the other uh, key um, uh, in, uh, sector here, uh, semiconductors, uh, starting to lose some leadership on a shorter term basis, uh, even though we're just holding this 200-day uh, moving average. We did close under the 10-day, quite a bit difference here than um, what we're seeing in IBB. And the pressure on financial stocks, um, especially with Buffett announcing late Friday that he dumped all of his Goldman Sachs, not surprising, KRE, regional banks, um, have been um, impacted as well, um, and that closed down over a percent. And you can see, compared to the two strongest sectors, KRE really looking uh, pretty, pretty poor. All right, now let's take a look at uh, the worldview here. Um, one thing to note, of course, is gold and oil. I'm going to focus on that. And um, first thing to note is we had this tremendous compression um, for, oh gee, almost a month. Um, and we had a classic, right, breakout here uh, from this wedge pattern and closed on new highs. And this is multi-year highs in, in gold and uh, same thing with uh, gold miners. The other thing to note, looking at commodities uh, and raw materials just in general, is that um, even oil, uh, uh, West Texas, um, got a little pop um, and is starting to show a little bit of leadership on a shorter term basis over the S&P that's been stalled. Now, if you take a look at the, um, the weekly picture, you can really see a classic wedge pattern. I mean, this one is really a textbook case, right? So right here, right, you had, I don't know, four, four weeks of uh, compression here um, and a breakout. And the other thing is on a, uh, our real motion, we're running a bit rich here on a weekly basis, but you know that can persist as you can see what happened uh, when we first broke out. So this um, four weeks of compression and the breakout should continue um, and obviously uh, you know, play with flexibility. All right, so um, that's pretty much the picture. Um, and so you can see uh, stepping back, you've got uh, inflationary pressures, uh, geopolitical stress, um, helping out gold, oil, uh, silver, um, gold miners. Um, these are the things that definitely got the benefit. Um, and now we're, you know, we're, we're in a really strong position here. Um, and overall, markets are in between, you know, the bigger longer term trend. And now this sideways compression action where we're definitely getting sort of uh, a rollover and, of course, uh, some weakness in these key intermarket relationships. But it hasn't capitulated because we got a little bit oversold and bounced off of a technical level. So there's the bigger picture. Play with uh, your eyes open. You know, these charts get updated every day. Take advantage of it. Come on back and uh, just see what the bigger picture is because that's really important now uh, in managing risk and taking advantage 
of some potentially massive uh, opportunities. All right, stay safe. See you next week and bye for now.